Hey guys, so I want to talk to you guys as I'm getting dressed for a, a little bit about emotionally and abusive relationships. And the reason why I'm doing this today, and a lot of people say that um, I don't really have a place in this conversation, or it's not really a conversation that should be had on the internet, but I believe it is. And the reason why I'm doing this today is because I am on my way to have my 10th court appearance. This is officially a trial against my ex-boyfriend because I was assaulted and I was in, in a domestic abusive relationship and an emotionally abusive relationship for about three and a half years. So I have a little bit of a place. I've been out of the relationship now for two and a half years and it is still going on today. Our legal system in Australia is not really on the side of the females. It is a little bit. It's getting there. But there's still not enough barriers in the way in between protecting the females from the accused and from the males. So I'm going to take us a little bit about my story, my experience, what I'm going through, the laws that need to be changed and in place, and a little bit of advice for any female that has to go through the exact same thing. So I am making this video as I'm getting ready for court because I just finished work and it's have to be there at 9am and I do not have time to do this any other time and I have time to sit around so I'm going to do this fast I get ready for my court appearance okay so first things first I was in a relationship with this dude for about three years I've been um, told that I should actually spread this story and go and tell the newspapers and stuff because of the way the legal system is it's pretty messy and there is things that need to be changed but I think the internet is a better way to tell my story so, as I said, relationship for just under four years. The relationship was okay or pretty good at the start. He did have anger issues, but I never really took notice of them, as a lot of girls probably don't, because they were never really directed towards me. I found that he was pretty short-tempered and stuff, but I never really felt that coming at me. And every time he said things I didn't necessarily agree with, I just kind of, like, shrugged it off, ignored, the, ignored him, or just kind of agreed with him to keep him happy. But because it wasn't at me, I never really thought it was an issue. His anger started to get pretty bad because he wasn't in the best place in his life. And one day there was a point where I was getting pretty fed up and I was going to leave. I wanted to leave the relationship for about a year leading up to it. A lot of people ask me, why didn't you just leave? And it's because when you're in an immense, immensely abusive relationship, you feel stuck. You get told that you're unattractive every day. You get told that you're useless. And you get told that you can't do, you can't be or do anything without that person. And over time, you start to really believe it. And surprisingly, even though I'm a very strong type of female, even I was fooled into believing that I couldn't have a life without this one person. Now, I got to a point where I really wanted to break up with him for about a year. And I couldn't wait for him to break up with me because I needed to get out. And one day he was really angry, a couple of days before Christmas, two years ago, uh, 2015, 16 I believe. Um, he was having a fight with his roommate and I was at a Christmas party and I got there too late and he took his anger out on me. So I've never actually done anything that required an argument or fight anything towards me. I kept my mouth shut, um, which I think a lot of girls do when they're in a relationship with an angry guy. And I just kind of agreed with him on things I didn't necessarily agree with just to keep him happy. So he took his anger out on me and he hit me multiple times. Um, whilst we were in a car, so it was a very awkward hit, I couldn't really get away and I was stuck. When he hit me, I was angry, I was in shock and I was a little bit relieved because the second he hit me was the second all those feelings that I had towards him being a good person just disappeared. And I was upset obviously, I ended up staying at a friend's house that night, but what followed was worse than the assault. Um, for hours afterwards, my phone went crazy because I got abusive after abusive text message of him um, threatening to murder me, of him threatening to assault me again, of him telling me that I'm a slut, what a terrible person I am. It went on and on. Those scared me more than the assault did, to be honest. And then I said at a friend's house, got my, took my phone, and he did like what any guy in that situation do. The next day he felt guilty, he messaged me, he apologized, he tried to say all the right things. He tried to say like he wanted to have a family with me, which is what I always wanted, he actually wanted to be with me, he loved me. Obviously they say the right things. I was of course skeptical, but I was dumb enough to slightly believe him enough to continue to talk to him. A lot of girls do in this situation and people don't get why, but it's because 
they start to tell us what we actually want to hear in the first place and it kind of tricks us and it's because the guys are going through kind of like a honeymoon phase of guilt now i started talking to him again we didn't start dating again he was going through heart surgery and i felt kind of sorry for him one of my mom's number one rules was never date a guy you feel sorry for and i fell straight into that trap over time he started to be honest with me again and he started to his anger started to show again and he started to tell me that he actually did not feel guilty or sorry for hitting me he did not feel bad about it that he actually thinks i kind of deserved it so after i realized that he said that i realized that he didn't care about what he did and he still thinks he's in the right and that was unacceptable. Okay, so I guess you're, you guess you're wondering how can someone just be so angry at someone for no real reason? I'll tell you the reasoning and you are probably going to laugh. So what happens is I am a strength and conditioning coach. As you know, I met this guy when I was doing jiu-jitsu uh, when I was 20 years old. So I was quite young and impressionable. I didn't know too many people in Australia because I moved here from China, which is where I grew up. And he believed that because he taught me the basics of being a PT, even though I did a PT course, even though I've done qualifications after, even though I've trained under other coaches since, uh, even though I've learned a lot from the internet, because he taught me the basics of how to teach people, he believed that he deserved 20% of everything I ever made in the industry. Completely ridiculous. In that mindset, you should every uni, every uni instructor, every mentor should make money off you so dumb right so because of that and because i was doing well in my own business as you guys know as a strength and conditioning coach and now that i own a um, electromuscular stimulation business his anger got more and i started to get more abusive messages of him saying that i could not stop from him and that he deserves all my money now fast forward it gets to a point with the messages where because funny thing is we actually work in the same gym as well so i would go to work and he will also be there and then when i go home i'll have abusive messages from him so you can see how my business was growing and how i was going as a trainer it was super uncomfortable and i found that when i was in the gym with him i actually spoke quieter i was a little bit uncomfortable i felt like i was restricted to how well my business could go because having him around so for about a year after i broke up we were in the same gym now i got to a point where i was with a friend and his messages and calls got way too much that i ended up going to the police and i ended up asking um for a restraining order against him because it was getting a bit too scary the threats were a little bit too overwhelming and i was worried that he was going to approach me and try and attack me one day now he was charged with basic assault um misuse of technology and also the restraining order now, I got my restraining order um, pretty much straight away, which is great. That's just how our legal system works. The, they could see that he was a threat to me and that he was being an issue. So they gave me my order. Now, he also, with the other charges in Australia, they have rules that you can't be um, placed as, you can't be convicted as guilty unless you plead guilty. So you can keep pushing these things out and you can keep going to trial and keep saying you're not guilty for an extremely long time and that's exactly what happened instead of getting a slap on the wrist for everything as a bulk everything got separated everything got spaced and i've been to court now at least 10 times for the text messages and the assault and then I, every time i think it's over he pleads guilty and then i find out he retracts his statement and he says he did nothing wrong and he decides to not plead guilty again and then i have to go through this court thing all again now the crazy part is he re represents himself now what that means if he represents himself i he i get to go on a witness stand and he gets to ask me questions and court is done that was my quickest court appearance so far thank god and hopefully my last had a quick little outfit change and now i'm back before jujitsu starts so i get to actually get ready for jujitsu now which i was a little bit worried that i was going to miss that session today but i'm just going to go over a few things quickly so I'm going to do another video on this, but I was talking to the prosecution and the police officers and we're talking about a lot of females who are in similar situations and they feel stuck and trapped and I want to talk a little bit of a video talking to those women and talking about getting through this and how one, you're not alone, one, you don't need that person even though, every, even though they're making you feel emotionally like you need them and you don't have life without that person. But for another video, all I want to say with this one is this case I've been dealing with, what's well, kind of his case, has been going on for about two and a half years now. 
and it's really good to finally hopefully be over i've been thinking that 10 times since i've been in that court the way this the legal system is at the moment is you can't be you can't be guilty unless you plead guilty which is you know has its it has its good things um but pretty much what that meant for me is i had to sit in the same room with the guy who assaulted me and a guy who threatened to murder me every couple months for the last two and a half years when you're going through a period where you're trying to get over a relationship you're actually completely having to revisit it over and over going through the text messages going through my statements this time so happy i did not have to go in front of the judge and i did not have to say a statement i did not he did not get to question me this time so one of my parents says i had to go on the stand and he got to ask me questions about our relationship um, they were all really dumb questions, but I'm very happy that I didn't have to go through that part again today. So my point is, our legal system in Australia is good, but it's not made yet to really protect females going through this. You still have to go in front of the co-accused, in front of your, um, if it's attacker or abuser or ex-boyfriend or whatever your situation is. One thing that's pretty messed up is that if you are going in for a restraining order in Australia, they have to agree to it. So I went in for my restraining order and he said no to it. And so I had to go to another trial, uh, like another another court case for the judge to kind of make a decision if I deserve to get my extension of my restraining order or not, or to get an extraining order. So in that case, it's a little bit silly. We do have a little bit more, we do have a bit more room to improve when it comes to looking after females in a lot of these situations. But I'm very happy that every officer I've had to deal with Every um, judge has been really friendly and really nice. So on that side, the legal system is really good. But I will make a video just talking to those females that have been through a similar thing that are going through this. And a lot of the cops say that a lot of girls aren't, um, aren't cooperating with them, aren't helping them, aren't giving them the information they need to help, their, to help against the attacker that has done this to them. They're protecting them in a way. And I understand why I understand how so I'm going to do a video directing to you ladies out there to help you guys out and talk a little bit about my situation. But I did this video because I really want to tell you guys what I've been going through in the last two years. One of the reasons why I'm still single um, because I find it hard to commit to a relationship or to find a guy that I trust enough after going through something like this because what it is is you give everything to someone and you put so much trust in them and then they can go and... Um, assault you or they can threaten to murder you out of the blue so things like that can make it hard to want to be in another relationship again and then whenever i do see hints of anger or hints of different things in certain guys i automatically say no i think it's really good for females to be single and that will be a little bit more adding on into my next video to explain that you don't need a guy you don't need a relationship straight away and it's okay to be single it's okay to be patient it's okay to wait until you find that special someone that you know is going to treat that you really really well so thank you guys so much for holding in with me last couple of years have been messy i've been going through all this stuff at the same time but i'm really happy to get it out in the open and share with you guys if you guys have any questions let me know and i'm happy to share and open up to you guys so thank you in the meantime keep being strong happy and healthy